Welcome to Mac Docs Tools, I'm Tom. So tonight we're doing a little, uh, a little more mill setup stuff. Um, working on these blasted pipette racks. Uh, <laughs> they're taking longer than I thought and, uh, and uh, so it's kind of like a production job here in the shop and uh, I just want to get it done. So uh, uh, I've been chipping away at it but I haven't been filming a lot of it. So, uh, but I got a couple little things I'm going to show tonight and uh, setups and uh, uh, how to reference multiple parts which is kind of interesting and uh, a lot of guys uh, think about this from time to time um, but you can get into trouble if you don't, uh, if you don't do it well. So uh, let's pop over to the mill we'll take a look at some of this stuff and uh, some of these uh, setups and uh, a couple of these little tricks for uh, stacking multiple parts. So let's check it out. Okay, so here we got the classic problem of uh, a bunch of pieces that we, we'd really like to process together. Um, and, you know, normally this is usually a good idea for speeding things along, but there's some problems with it, especially when you want to do something like this, right? Okay, um, actually there's one too many in there. There's supposed to be five. Um, anyway, uh, um, they're slightly different widths, they're slightly different lengths, so you got to be a little bit careful how you hold on to these things. Let's just get rid of this one for... So I don't trick myself here. Um, excuse me. So how do we do that, right? You know, and clamp them um, so it's not just clamping the widest one here, right? And then, um, so we want to make them all the same length as well. Okay, so what we'll do to start with here is uh, we'll pick an edge, and since that one's against the back, we'll just use that as our as our reference. And I'm just going to bring this up and touch it, so I can still move them around a little bit. Okay. Well, then I'm, I'm going to use a little square here, and I'm just going to get one end kind of referenced up here. Okay. And I'm going to use this to clamp it. Okay. So we're clamping them together like a laminate, so uh, they're they're cool, right? Now, grab a couple of little cant twisters, okay, and these are just our standard cant twists, and we're going to put, uh, I'm going to put it there, and I'm going to put it kind of close to the end on this side here, so we'll cinch these down. Now these, these will stay on for the whole, the whole operation here, so at least theoretically, okay? Alright, so now those are, those are locked down. So. We've referenced the bottom and we've referenced one end, okay? So we got a couple of, uh, of uh, datums. All right. Now what we're gonna do, we'll flop it down like that. Okay, now here's the trick part. So normally this would just be a problem clamping like that. What we're gonna do, and I, I don't know, I may have shown this trick before, I use it all the time. This is this soft aluminum welding wi wire here, 4043 from the welding department. <laughs> And I'm just going to cut off a couple pieces well, and drop them into the vise. Alright, let's cut another one the same length. And then what we do with this, I'm just going to drop it in. I'm just going to klutzily bend it over. Well, that's just like right in the middle almost, isn't it? Look at that. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to bend it 90. I'll drop it in like that. Bend it 90, drop it in like that, okay? And then these just keep it from falling in, so I'll just kind of put it where I want it, um, which is, I really want it down a little farther that way, so I got a little more room to clear the end mill. And then I'm gonna hold it down, I'm just gonna clamp it in, okay? Now what that does is that soft wire, you can see that it's grabbed in there, right? Is it? It bends, it takes a little zigzag to accommodate this, uh, the displacement between the different widths of those pieces, okay? Um, and if I clamp it hard enough, it'll actually bend it. This is plastic, so it's just going to equalize that force between all those pieces, okay? So, let's go ahead and um, what we'll do now. Is we'll take a little skim cut on this end, just to square, uh, just to true those ends up dead nuts to each other. All right. 
I'm just gonna come in and take take a little cut off of that. All right, do a little more. Okay, so it looks like I got a I got a pretty good cleanup there. And I do one more little little bit there. There's a fair amount to come off of this particular set here. All right, so those look like they're reference pretty good. Now I want the cutter to end up in the back just because it's easier for me to work. So I'm just going to run it to the back with one more little pass like that. Okay. So now I got a nice end registration there. Okay. Okay. Let's see how soft this stuff is. Okay. So let's take this out now. We're going to save these because we're going to use them again. All right. And then I'm going to flop it this way using that same reference edge in the back. Okay. And I'm going to put them back in. And I'll put my little, I don't know, I, I need a good name for these things. The little wigglers or little chingus taker uppers or I don't know what. I, I need a good name. So, okay, so now we're back tight again. So now what I'm going to do, now what we want to do is we want to bring them to length, right? Well, we'll just do the quick bozo check with the tape measure first. Okay, so I got a mile to get, boom. 12.75, yeah, I'm barely gonna make it here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll probably have to take that clamp off. Um, you know what, I had to just bandsaw a bunch of that off of there. These end up 12 and three quarters, so that's actually kind of a lot. Um, but what I wanna show for starters is how I use the DRO to track these lengths, okay? So what we're gonna do is we'll take a do the same thing, we're gonna take a little reference cut off of this, okay? Just to kind of clean that end up. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll take it over to the bandsaw because that's kind of a lot, all right? Once again, I'll take a little trim ski. Okay, so now the, all those ends are kind of nicely referenced to one another, all right? I'm gonna zero the DRO. Okay, now I'm gonna take a measurement. Now you notice here, it's in incremental mode, okay? Um, which is fine. So we're gonna use our big calipers here, and we'll take a measurement. Now I'm gonna take note of this number here. So I got 13,935, okay? Or 353.97 millimeters. Yeah, I forgot my other number. <laughs> Just here. Let's measure it again. All right, whoop. A little variation there. All right, 13,936. Okay. Now, here's, the, here's one way to use the DRO. So, what I'm going to do is I can enter a number here 13.936, and it'll be a negative. And I'm just going to enter that as a preset, okay? So now when I move, when I move, I'm actually reading the, the number here. So let's, uh, let's, let's take a little cut here. Let's go down to 13.9. We're going to take a cut. And I'll just take a measurement with it in the front like this. Okay, now this should read 13.9, which it does. Okay, 13.9005, okay. So depends how hard I squeeze on it, okay. So now this makes it a little tougher, <laughs> just a little tougher to make a, a, a bozo mistake, okay because uh, my DRO is actually tracking the dimension. I can still screw it up, but uh, at least my, I'm not doing any math between what I, what I am currently and what I want to be. So it avoids math errors. You can look at your uh, uh, DRO for a, you know, a indication of how much farther you have to go, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the thing I wanted to show. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over to the bandsaw and lop a hunk off of this uh, off either end here and kind of get a little closer. Uh, I don't want to mill all that off, so, or maybe I will, I don't know. 
Okay, anyway, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to show. So I got a couple of box parallels here and um, we have a setup, um, we have to cut a little notch on the end of a long piece. So they're too tall to stand up in the vise. So I'm going to uh, do what I call side saddle. Uh, we'll hang them off to the edge of the table and they'll project down below and we'll swing the head of the mill over to, uh, to get in this area to work. Okay. Uh, so what I've done is I, this is my reference surface here. Uh, and this is in line with the table here, and I just uh, set it up like this, okay, with a one, two, three block and lock that down. And then to create a little uh, a vertical fence on that, so I don't have to, excuse me, uh, square it this way, I just put another one up to it and extended that out a little bit, and I created a vertical wall there. So now I have a, um, uh, primary and secondary uh, uh, datum here. So let's go ahead and put that up there. Um, so this is the thing, and I still have them clamped together from when we milled the ends, and then I've gone ahead and drilled the holes in it too. Now I stack drilled these also, just so you guys know, uh, which saves a lot of time, okay? Um, so now I'm looking here, I'm looking to make sure that I continue to use my same reference edge, which I've marked, and we'll set that like that. And this clamps is holding it up right now, so I'll push it up against that wall. And I can't quite reach the clamp, so I gotta do a quickie there, okay. So I'm just gonna use this woodchuck clamp initially here to kinda uh, set it up against the fence and just hold it in place so it doesn't fall down, okay, until I'm happy with it, all right. Uh, but the real clamp, I'm gonna use this Bessie here to do the uh, to do the real deed here, up, right up where I'm going to be milling. Now it's just a little shallow notch, and it's it's soft plastic, so uh, it's not really. Uh... So now I can loosen this clamp, and I, I still I won't lose my registration. I'm going to leave it on there just because I'm a chicken. All right, so call it a chicken clamp. So this gets a uh, a little groove plowed through it here like this that's one inch wide like that okay and then there's a series of tapped holes uh, I'll probably do the tapped holes separately since I want them well maybe not I'll, I'll measure I'll measure a piece of this material and maybe we'll go ahead and tap them while we while we got them up um, if there's any variation in the material thickness uh, it starts to stack up as you do multiple holes so you gotta be a little careful with that so I think we're kinda ready to ready to mill there so, um, um, I guess I'll swing the head over and get an end mill up there and uh, pick up these two edges. Let's rub this out a little first. Well, if you run this out first, you, uh, you have a little more leverage <laughs> if you're old and weak like me. Okay. Be sure to tighten all the bolts. 
saw somebody forget to do that once. <laughs> and there's Mr. Bozo. All right, leave that there. Okay, so we'll get a tool in there and uh, we'll get going. All right, let's uh, loosen that up. So here's a uh, so you see that's a 5 8 shank, and I happen to have a one inch end mill that has a 5 8 shank, so I just saved a collet change. Now that's a useful trick, even with a power draw bar, um, you know, saves a a collet change. Okay, all right, let's go up. Alright, so this is pretty easy here. Uh, there's nothing precise about this, it's an, or super precise anyway, it just needs to be in the right place, 1.5, and um, the depth. So we're just going to come down and touch that gently. I'm going to zero, come back, and if I'm really lucky, I got enough room. Yeah, I got enough room. Okay, and check my drawing so I don't make a bozo mistake. Okay, it's a sixteenth deep. That's too fast. I want nice and slow and mellow here. All right, I'm just gonna take it all in one whack here. Since it's just kind of a, it's a registration feature for a clip. Okay, table lock. I'm at the right number. I'm clamped up. All right, let's go. No time like the present, right? Hey, nice and mellow. This stuff cuts like cream cheese. So, uh, and then here's the bozo check here, just to uh, to make sure we're good. So those should be equal, and they are. All right. That's it. All right, so rinse and repeat, uh, and then uh, maybe I'll set up to uh, uh, to tap those holes too. So the the thicknesses were pretty uniform, so uh, I went. I decided to go ahead and. Uh, Kind of stack drill these too. You got to be real careful with this, though, that your uh, your piece um, your pieces are uniform thickness and they're very tightly clamped together. Otherwise, you get over a short range like this. It's not too bad. Uh, uh, but if you try to do you know a hundred like this, you get a you get a, a cumulative problem going on. Okay, so go ahead and uh, tap those now. I'm putting it down close so I can kind of eyeball where to stop, and then, uh, yeah, it's actually pretty close there, so. You know, while I'm here, I'm pulling the, uh, the uh, goop out of the inside there. Uh, that's my next number, 564. You see, you see how long it takes to position accurately. That's why. Okay, one more. And that was the easy one in 188. So I'm eyeballing the depth just so the, uh, you know, so the tap's fully engaged. These will just be a short little screw attaching that. Okay, that's it.